Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and welcome back to Class of Friday. We had an entire month of Cobra, and it's time for us to get back to G.I. Joe. And we're starting with a figure that I've wanted to take a closer look at since I got it. This is Spirit Iron Knife. For full disclosure, this figure was sent to me by Hasbro. I did not purchase it myself. I did take a brief look at it when I reviewed the vintage Spirit action figure, but now I want to do a full review. Let's look at the packaging. We have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories and he does come with an eagle we have the gi joe classified series logo and the name spirit iron knife we have some package art on the front and on the side and this is by native american artist jeffrey verigay and i do think this is appropriate i think it's important they brought a native american artist in on this project this figure is number 36 in the series on the back we have some generic poster artwork and on this side we have these symbols which represent his specialties this is one of those big horns that you blow through. This is four R2-D2s standing side by side. This means he hates football. And this is a birthday cake with three candles. Let's open the box and take out Spirit Iron Knife and take a look at the figure. Here is Spirit Iron Knife out of the box. And this classified figure is heavily inspired by Spirit Version 1 from 1984. Almost all of the details are copied over, but there were some changes. Some of those changes I think were good and even an improvement on the original. Let's take a look at Spirit Iron Knife's accessories, starting with his main weapon, his sniper rifle, which can fit in his hand. It's a pretty tight fit. Um, it is in black plastic. It has brown furniture. It has a long scope. It has a hole in the barrel for blast effects, and it has a removable magazine. This sniper rifle is only superficially similar to the accessory that came with the 1984 figure, this arrow gun, and I am glad they changed it. I was never a big fan of that original accessory. One notable difference is the color. They eliminated the olive drab green from the accessories, which reduces the color variety on the classified figure. And while I don't think that's a problem, it is a notable departure from the 1984 original. Next, let's look at the eagle. The eagle has pegs on the feet, which fit holes on this perch on the backpack. There are also holes on this armband around Spirit's right arm, so the eagle can also be pegged on the arm, and Spirit can hold the eagle similar to the way the 1984 figure did. The eagle is mostly in dark brown plastic. He has a white head and a white tail. He has a yellow beak and feet. He has an articulated head and articulated wings and articulated legs and feet. This eagle is inspired by the eagle that came with the 1984 figure. This eagle's name is Freedom, but he is not named on the packaging. That's a little surprising. The Snake Eyes figure that comes with the wolf has the name Timber on the packaging, and even Croc Master has the name for the crocodile, but Freedom is not named. One major difference between the 1984 eagle and the classified eagle is the original has the wings spread, but the classified eagle has an alternate set of wings, so you can pose him this way. Classified Freedom includes an alternate set of wings. To swap them out, you just have to pop off the closed wings. Then you can pop on the open wings, and that allows you to pose this eagle uh, in his wings open position. So now he looks a lot more like that 1984 original vintage Freedom Eagle. There you have classified Spirit Iron Knife posing with his eagle and looking very much like his little brother. Now let's look at the backpack. The backpack is somewhat inspired by the 1984 original, but the colors are updated and he no longer has the cartridges for the arrow launcher because he no longer includes the arrow launcher. Instead he has these black segments here. I'm not sure exactly what they are for, but it did need to be updated because he does not include that 1984 original weapon. The backpack is primarily tan. It has these black cartridges or containers or whatever they are. It has a perch for the eagle. It has a couple of pouches with straps and buckles, and it has a peg on one side. This is for pegging on the rifle. You can peg this rifle on the backpack by sticking this peg straight through the trigger guard, and it does hold pretty well. We've seen several 
ways of pegging weapons onto backpacks in this classified series, including weapons that have holes straight through them, and others that have giant pegs on the side. It doesn't make a lot of sense to hold a rifle through the trigger guard on the backpack, but given the alternatives, I'll take this. He has even more removable accessories. On this strap on the chest, there is a tan sheath with a fringe, and in that sheath there is a knife. This knife has a black and silver decorative blade and a black handle with a bird skull on it. This is a really fascinating accessory and I like it a lot. On his right leg he has a brown holster and in that holster he has a pistol that is removable. The pistol is in black plastic. It has a hole in the barrel for blast effects if you're into that kind of thing. This almost looks like an old Colt 1911. It's really nice. I like it. On his left leg, he has a brown sheath with another knife because you can't have too many. This one is a plain black knife. Looks like a survival knife. Not a lot of detail. This is probably the least impressive accessory, but it's still pretty good. Let's take a look at the articulation. Spirit Iron Knife has classified figure articulation, which is is pretty good and it's better on this figure because he's not wearing a vest or anything like that that would obstruct the articulation points. He has a ball jointed head on a swivel neck so he's got great range of motion on the head. Basically any position you want to put the head in you can. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders and these actually move better than on some other figures I've seen. He can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a swivel at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a swivel at the wrist and his left wrist has an up and down hinge and the right wrist has an in and out hinge. He has a large hinge at the rib cage so he has an ab crunch with a ratchet. He also has a ball and socket at the waist so he can move at the waist. He has a leg split. His leg can move forward pretty well and back not so much. He has a swivel at the thigh cut. He has double jointed knees, he has a swivel at the boot cut, and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Spirit Iron Knife starting with the head, and his head has black hair and a red headband. This is a really good head. The face has character, the hair looks very realistic. He has an appropriate skin tone, unlike the 1984 figure that had a very light skin tone. This looks like what we would expect Spirit to look like. On the chest, he has a red undershirt, and over that he has a blue shirt, just like the 1984 figure. A couple pockets on that, and over that he has this strap and belt piece that's a separate piece. It's not really intended to be removable, but you probably could remove it with some effort. The straps are brown, and and he has this light blue circular device thing that we saw on early classified figures. He also has a smoke grenade and a fragmentation grenade. He has that tan knife sheath. The belt part of that strap and belt piece has a couple buckles. It has a black buckle and it has a silver western style belt buckle. And it has some pouches and a couple extra magazines for the pistol. His arms feature light blue rolled up sleeves on the right sleeve he has a red tomahawk patch and on the left sleeve he has red sergeant's chevrons those are similar to the patch tempos on the 1984 figure his right forearm is bare his left forearm has the brown band with pegs for pegging on the eagle he has gold bands around his wrists and he has brown gloves the waist piece and the legs are in tan plastic just like the 1984 figure but this is less like a stereo typical western outfit and more like realistic battle fatigues. He has pockets on the upper legs. On the right leg he has that brown pistol holster with straps around the right leg. On the left leg he has the brown sheath with a single strap around the left leg. We finish up with some brown boots, not the fur-lined moccasins of the 1984 original figure, but I think this works better. These boots have some straps and some texture, some nice detail, and they have black souls. I have not liked all of the figures that Hasbro sent me, and I've been very clear about that, but this is one that I do 
like. It is inspired by that 1984 Spirit action figure, but I had some problems with that 1984 figure, and this classified version mostly fixes those problems. They did this right, and I have to give them credit when they do that. The classified figure does not come with this red loincloth, but I always thought that was weird anyway, so he's better off without it. And they added some additional details to the legs to make up for it, and that's what you have to do when you eliminate an element like that. You have to add something to make up for it, and that's what they did. This is a rare occasion when I'm going to say I prefer the classified figure to the vintage figure. I think the vintage figure is better than the 25th anniversary figure, but I think the classified spirit iron knife beats them all. That was my review of the G.I. Joe classified series 6-inch action figure spirit iron knife. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you check back every Friday for Class of Friday when I review a G.I. Joe classified series figure. I also review vintage G.I. Joe action figures every Sunday, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. If you would like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get some special perks and some early access, and you can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'll be back soon with more vintage and classified G.I. Joe toy reviews. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.